So today we're going to cover CeraBend blocks. So something you definitely as a medical physicist need to be familiar with how to cut them, implement them, and the characteristics of them for your clinic. So say you get this picture. What is seen in this picture? What is it made of? How much should we attenuate the beam to? How to decide how much of this to use? If you have an island block, like say an eye shield, how much dose is there behind the block? And then what is the HVL and thickness needed for a 20 MeV electron beam? So I love questions like these because not only is it very clinical, but it's things that this is going to help you be a better clinical medical physicist. And so that's why questions like these I absolutely love and they're easily my favorite. So right here we do have cerebin block. So why, why are we going to use these? Essentially, it's going to cover areas that we want to avoid dose to also can use them for shielding or shields, not shielding, but shields for patients. So what is it made of? So I always remember this uh, BLT with cheese. So that essentially just gives you a little, I forgot what that's called, but the letters to help you with that. So it is bismuth uh, lead tin I think that's SN, actually, the periodic table, and then cadmium. So that's what it's made of. So some characteristics of this. We'll get to the characteristics down here, actually. We'll just talk about all of it down there. So how much should we attenuate the beam to? So we want to attenuate this beam that we are blocking with the Cerebin block to around 5%. So that means the beam is 5% as strong as it was initially after it passes the cerebin block. And so, for example, for a 6X, now granted this is photons, a lot stronger, a lot deeper penetration, we're going to need somewhere on the order of 8 cm of cerebin for that. That's a whole lot. Thankfully, most of the time we use these for electrons, so you're going to need a lot less. So now, how do we decide how much of this to use? There's this nice equation, not always the easiest to remember, but it really helps if you can remember it. You'll never need to know any type of rule of thumb or anything like that in the clinic or on this exam. So now the thickness in lead is equal to the thickness in cerebend, I'm just going to call it cer, multiplied by the density of cerebend and the density of lead. And this amount is given by 9.4 grams per cm cubed divided by 11.34 of the same unit. So that is how you can determine how much you would need there. Now, if you have an island block, uh, like an eye shield, this does happen in realistic medical physics in the clinic, how much dose is going to, or how much dose is behind the block? So now you got to, you remember, so we are going to use this to block to about 5% past the shield or past the cerebend, but because it's an island block, you're going to have, imagine uh, this block, you have a beam coming through, but you also have some radiation and some scatter that is going to get in behind that block. So the combination of the transmission through the block and the scatter is going to be about 20 to 30 percent compared to no block at all. So, of course, this does depend on the size of the block, but that is a good number to remember if you are asked or quizzed about this. So now what is the half value layer and the thickness needed for a 20 MeV electron beam? So HVL here is 13 millimeters for 20 MeV, meaning that if you want to get this to about 5% or you know, a good clinical level, you're going to want somewhere around 1 cm thick. Now, as I mentioned, I think it's good to know some information about CeraBend basic, basic characteristics. So, for example, the melting point, which is really nice that you would be able to melt this in the clinic and form your own CeraBend blocks. 
that is at 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You definitely don't want to stick your hand in it, but it's much more reasonable and able to use. Now the HVL, so we talked about for 20 MeV, so for 6X, that is going to be 1.5 cm. If we're talking about the, you know, eight, let's say uh, 18X, we'll do that. That's gonna be about 1.8 to 2 cm. So obviously depending on the energy, the HVL is going to change. It's maybe remember these two easy numbers, 1.5 and two, uh, they're not gonna expect you to know every single number, but having some idea like if you didn't know how much 20 MeV needed, it's important for you to think on your feet and say, you know, I don't know what 20 MeV is, but I do know that for 6X, the HVL is 1.5 and 20s and 6X are somewhat close probably. So maybe a little less. That at least gives the examiner some idea that you know generally the numbers you're talking about. And it's not like, oh, a therapist or a decimetrist asking you to cut a block and you end up cutting it 5 cm or something when you need a 6 MeV block. So just ballpark numbers, I think is important. That's what the examiners want to see. And so if you have any question about cerebellum block, if you don't use them in your clinic, feel free to ask. Most always do. It'd be a really good idea even in your clinic to go make one yourself. Really be sure how they're used and the best ways to implement them. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll help you where I can. Happy studying.